beautiful, awesome body of Christ. It's cozy. <laughs> we are connected both near and far. It's that simple. You did it. It feels good, doesn't it? It's this simple and it's this complicated. Right arm, left shoulders, right far, far shoulder, all that business. Neil, you may be seated. You can keep your hand on the person's knee if you want to next to you. <laughs> Little love, tender love. Neil deGrasse Tyson, a noted physicist, asserts that we are all connected. To each other, we are connected biologically. To the earth, we are connected chemically. To the rest of the universe, we are connected atomically, in our atoms. In other words, we are the body of Christ. It just is. This is who we are. Our hearts open as our bodies stretch. As we live more and move more, we come to know the intention of Christ. As we come to know we are one, we begin to care. We begin to live what we say we believe. For if we genuinely love, we become Christ's body. And everything that is hurt, everything that seemed to us to be irreparably damaged, is in Christ transformed. And recognized as whole, as lovely, as radiant in Christ. We awaken as the beloved in every last part of our body. This room is full of wisdom and experience, and we are inviting you to enter into a time of sharing with one another, a time to play and brainstorm, to know and to care and to act. There are yellow sheets on your tables. There are the bright yellow sheets like this. And we invite you to engage in the process that is printed on your little yellow sheet. This will take about 15 minutes, so take the time to share with one another, and we'll call one another back to the group when we're ready. No, I don't. So we are considering today the Lorax. The first step is for someone to read the synopsis out loud. Um, why don't you read it, Bishop? And then, we'll, then there are questions. There are three questions that we ask one another. A boy meets the Ancelot in high in a tower. He tells him a story about the reading of how he came along. He soon took a tally. Just how many trees does it take to make the leaves? Did it do dads and actually know what he needs? But can he but can he be taught to purchase what he wants? And the money rolls in, the trees are out of luck, plants start to die off, birds and bears start to fall. Then from out of the sky drops an old looking guy, the Lorax, who's come to say, Hey, wait a minute, you're destroying the trees for the profit that's in them. The leaves factory muddies the water and air, and there before long there is not a thing left living there. The, Ro the Lorax flies away, leaving a stone behind, the grave of the messenger, all to unwind. Unless, says the stone, when the once lurked alone, he deciphers the meaning and the wisdom of it. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, 
gives to the boy the last seed from a tree, and he begs him to plant it, to tend it, and see if life can come back to the land and its kin, if the world turns around and new life will be given. As you experience this story, what scripture passage or concept comes to mind? story came to mind and, uh, that, that, uh, all those movements of the creation and at every point you can still command the stewards of the land. There's a passage I think in Deuteronomy or I should probably know this better but where it where it says if you do all of these things the land will bless you and if you don't do these things it will dry up and it will go away. passage that came to my mind is uh, uh, not into the references, but, uh, but in the, the, the sense of the father when he visited the father. Mm-hmm. The son was neglected. I'm off to the So, what am I doing that's going to be the book of my nature? Mm-hmm. It's bringing some real cooperation or maybe even have a stand up system. Yeah, keep them coming. Keep them coming. You're about the fifth person. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass them again. I think. <laughs> Isn't that what we do? And yeah. <laughs> they're not full. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't get the ninety thousand dollars we need to put around, yeah, seriously. I know. I'm gonna pledge you. We actually don't know where we get the money if we don't get it. So. <laughs> Better do it. Do you hear God's yeah, voice? so say more about that. Yeah, so we are, we are uh, we're people of resurrection. We always believe in the future. Uh, we tend to look back and say, well, wish, you know, it was better back then, or this is, but this is the better. I mean, right. buying all these pieces of new doodads that nobody actually needs. I mean, that's the better. Those are the glory days that we're talking about. That's not glorious at all. <laughs> that's not, I mean, to me, that's not glorious at all. The glory is that life is going on. Mm. Well, you know, well, there, there, there are some people, and I, I say this because I had these conversations with my father, who, uh, you know, really, because of its generation he is, always believes there's going to be a technological change. Mm. You know, and so there's this sort of theology of, yeah, it's about the future, it's about resurrection, God will take care of it, and that's what we have the responsibility for, right? And, and, you know, it's just a twisting of uh, the resurrection story. Well, what we're finding now is that the things that we thought the future cars or little pills that we can take, what we have is that we're more connected, that we never imagined that. I mean, the thing, the future that we anticipated is not what we're getting. What we're getting is what we need, is that we're more connected, that we use our human resources smarter, wiser, we design better. But it's, it's the caring about it. We have some of the solutions ready, but we don't. And I, I don't find that, that people care. are quite To despair too. Yeah. <laughs> but you're trying to, live, you're to live in resurrection. I am I'm totally up. I'm yeah. hoping at it. <laughs> I guess if I were to ask, who, how do I hear God's voice in this reading? It's I guess to be one who cares a whole awful lot. But I feel like if you care a whole awful lot, you just get hurt. But is that not the way it works? <laughs> 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 That's how all of this connects, you know. Jeez, get free of that. Yeah. Yeah. 
so how do we care a whole awful lot? I guess we give our money. I guess we stop buying things that we don't actually need. We stop being greedy. It's 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 all about lifestyle. I mean, give, giving's about lifestyle. Not being over consuming is about lifestyle. And it's carrying uh, That's why it's so hard. Yeah. It's it's all it is. I mean, thinking about it is so much easier than doing but, it. But here's the here's the hope that I. <laughs> Somebody has to be. <laughs> the, these are all uh, formational issues. In other words, if we were teaching right. Right. Oh. from a very young age mm -hmm. what it means to be human, what how to live, uh, you know, we we could change this in a generation. I have a I have a grandson who's eight. shaping people to peace. <laughs> We're shaping, it's shaping to not be greedy. Well, it's, hard. it's so hard. I mean, we are still following people. Yeah. Holy <laughs> wands. I totally want. I mean, I bought new shoes. <laughs> for for or new shoes. I totally did. So I need to shut up about not buying things I don't need. <laughs> well, maybe, but on the other hand, maybe you really did need them. Who knows I what do, the rest I of your shoes look they like. They are so dangerous. <laughs> Someone in our planning session said that if um, that the connection between the environment and my starting children wasn't for her generation, it didn't make sense. And I thought, wow, I don't know how to, I don't know what to do that. Thank you. 
reason the reason they excuse me, I would just say those are so important is you know, most of the a great deal of the Well, what do you think? What happened in your discussions? Would you like to share? This is not a rhetorical question. Mm -hmm. if, would you, what happened in your discussions? Would you like to share? If you said yes, come to a microphone. Okay, number four. Uh, Paula Colton Deacon at Hennepin Avenue. And I have read this story for years and years and years to my eight and 10 year old and I love it and it was hard to read it in short version because I think I have the whole thing memorized. But I had a brand new thought sitting at my table. And my thought is, what if that stone is the resurrection stone? What if that's the tombstone? What if that's the stone that was rolled away? And we are the people that are called to be rooted and grounded in finding new ways to care for people and the earth. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Number four. Uh, Crystal from Ballotin UMC. This microphone's really loud. <laughs> it starts at home. You know, these guys used everything up at home, and like so many humans, we use everything up and then we move on like a plague. But in order to fix it, you've got to stay where you're at, replant, regrow. And it reminds me of the story of Noah, how God was just finished. He was ready to move on, and Noah said, just give us a chance. And so they saved two of everything, and God wiped it out, and he started over. So it starts at home, and then it grows again. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Microphone number five. Um, Jeannie Young from the Norwood United Methodist Church. And I believe that the Lorax is God. And uh, God came down and saw how messy this earth was, and he sent us a stone. And that stone is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was the one that came to earth, and he's the one that showed us how to fix this earth. And that uh, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. And if we keep our eye on this cornerstone and we build our foundation, that's a foundation that our church is built on. That's the stone I believe that this is talking about, is to build, rebuild our earth and rebuild our world and rebuild our church on the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Number six. Go ahead. 
Dave Mary retired from uh, Hamlin Methodist Church. We came up with one of the people said that in hearing the word Lorax, thought of the Lord. But we also thought about the rainforest and seeing the rainforest being stripped, but also as we looked at home, we thought of pastures and tree claims that are being stripped in our own country. So we're just as guilty of it. We can point to somebody else is doing it, but it starts with us. And it starts with one person. So each one of us is, as you said, the body of Christ. And we are asked to do what we can where we are. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Number five. All right, I'm Haley Matheson from Minnetonka United Methodist Church. Um, so I read this quote uh, in bold down at the bottom, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better, it's not. And it's a quote that I've heard many a times. Um, and as we were discussing the first question, um, what scripture passage or um, concept comes to mind. What I thought of when I was reading that quote, uh, probably for the millionth time, um, was unless someone like me, unless someone like you loves Jesus a whole awful lot and cares about Jesus and cares about other people a whole awful lot, nobody else is going to uh, get to know Jesus Christ. So if we're not willing to go out and share Christ with everybody else, um, nobody else is going to get to know Christ. Thank you for sharing. Number two, Jesse Penny, uh, Bethel United Methodist Church in Mound. Uh, ditto to everything that's been said already. Uh, but then we also looked at the seeds, and we said that we are the seeds, and we can make a difference uh, if we are intentional about taking action. And uh, what really motivates us is being able to see the end results. So, for example, packing these meals, when we saw the film after the, or at the end, where you could see, or maybe it's at the beginning, or never, but you could see the difference these meals make. Um, that's when God feeds your own spirit. So, um, so seeing the results in the big picture is very important to keep the uh, energy alive and growing. Thank you for sharing. May we live with the knowledge of our identity. May our identity as followers of Christ guide our actions with courage and grace. And hear this quote from John Wesley. I believe in my heart that faith in Jesus Christ can and will, and will lead us beyond an exclusive concern for the well-being of other human beings to the broader concern for the well-being of the birds in our backyards, the fish in our rivers, and every living creature on the face of the earth. Let's stand and sing together.
Friends, before you receive um, the benediction, let us express our thanks to God for what God has been doing through our musicians and our leaders this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Following the benediction, there'll be a closing song, and then I want you to immediately sit down because we're going to give you the first ballot report and take our next ballot, and then we're going to move on with the rest of our agenda. So you'll all want to be attentive, correct? That's what I thought. The 105th Psalm says this, Pursue the Lord and the Lord's strength. Seek the Lord's face always. Remember the wondrous works the Lord has done. All the Lord's marvelous work and the justice the Lord declared. Friends, when you leave here, as we move on to the rest of our agenda this day, remember the wondrous work the Lord has done. See right here? Here it is. It's the wondrous work the Lord has done and is doing. So let us go into this day remembering the wondrous works the Lord has done and continues to do. And may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the power and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. All right, I invite you to stand and sing along with our last song. Not, you can't sit down yet. Come